In today's farm report, pests can cause several issues for producers on the farm. Emily Wilmus with the University of Minnesota Extension Service Office talks about one particular pest, the starling. I spend a lot of time talking about things you do want on your farm, but what about the things you don't want, like pests? One pest in particular can be a huge problem on Minnesota farms in the winter. I am referring to birds, and specifically the starling. When the weather is cold and the ground is covered in snow, these birds look for a more convenient food source, and they find just that on many livestock farms. Starlings can contribute significantly to feed losses. J.W. Schroeder, dairy specialist with North Dakota State University Extension, explains starlings can eat 50% of their body weight in feed in a day. 1,000 birds easily can consume 100 pounds of grain in one day. Not only do starlings eat feed, but they also defecate and feed in water and on equipment and buildings. Starlings cause issues related to economic efficiency, animal health, and equipment and building maintenance. Farmers have tried several methods to get rid of the birds, including shotguns, pyrotechnics, and ceiling barns and buildings. Hawks are natural predators of starlings, but attracting hawks to live near a farm can be difficult. The European starling, also known as the common starling, is not native to the U.S., so producers can use lethal control measures. The United States Department of Agriculture offers baiting services for farmers. This can be effective, Schroeder says, but it has a significant cost. Another option is a pesticide called starlicide, which is available for farmers to purchase if they have a private pesticide license. This chemical comes pre-mixed and ready to use. Schroeder says, before you use this chemical, make sure that no protected birds will have access to this bait because it will kill most types of birds or fowl. The chemically, chemical will not significantly affect cattle or other animals around the farm. The best time to put the bait out is in the morning, when the ground is frozen or snow-covered. Schroeder advises, it is a good idea to notify any close neighbors of your plants so it won't come as a surprise if they find dead birds on their property. If you have additional questions about dealing with starlings, call me at the Stearns County Extension Office at 320-255-6169. This is Emily Wilmus with University of Minnesota Extension. In Washington, D.C. Friday, Vice President Joe Biden, Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack, and others toured a huge new project that will reduce sewage overflows into nearby rivers, a government project that would have been impossible without private sector investment. Tom Vilsack said infrastructure projects like this are desperately needed in rural areas, too, but the demand exceeds the federal money available. That's why today we're announcing our Rural Opportunity Investment Initiative to connect even more private capital to rural water, energy, and broadband projects and expand support for projects like this. This one throughout our communities. Vice President Biden said previously individual communities would have to request federal money for their rural water and sewer projects, but many of these projects extend beyond just one community. So under this new initiative, Tom is going to be able to bring together numerous rural communities to maximize the ability of all of them to attract capital off the sideline. He said that's the only way to raise the three and a half trillion dollars it's going to take to do needed infrastructure repairs and upgrades. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington. The University of Minnesota Extension Service has been hosting Farm Bill workshops to inform producers about new programs being implemented by the 2014 Farm Bill. Emily Wilmes with the University of Minnesota Extension Service Office share some last-minute dates for producers who still want to learn about the new programs. Did you miss the opportunity to attend a Farm Bill workshop about the new crop programs? University of Minnesota Extension and the Farm Service Agency will be offering one last chance for farmers to attend an informational meeting about those programs. There will be seven last-chance meetings held throughout the state, and the first will be held in Freeport at the Freeport Community Center on Tuesday, January 27th from 9.30 to noon. The new Farm Bill eliminated the DCP and Acre programs, replacing them with two new programs, Price Loss Coverage and Agriculture Risk Coverage. PLC is a price-based program, while ARC is a revenue-based program. ARC also allows the enrollee to pick one of two options, a county-level coverage or an individual-level coverage. There are important decisions that need to be made by landowners related to these changes, and understanding them is important in the decision-making pro process. 
These meetings are the last opportunity for landowners and farmers alike to come and learn about ARC and PLC from University of Minnesota Extension and the Farm Service Agency. Besides the Freeport meeting on January 27th, there will be six other meetings around the state. Wednesday, January 28th at Southwest Minnesota State University in Marshall, Tuesday, February 3rd at the Courtyard Marriott in Mankato, Wednesday, February 4th at the Rochester International Event Center in Rochester, Wednesday, February 4th at University of Minnesota Crookston, Thursday, February February 5th at the Big Wood Event Center in Fergus Falls, and Thursday, February 5th at the University of Minnesota St. Paul campus. These meetings are offered free of charge and don't require any pre-registration. If you have any questions about any of these meetings, call me at the Stearns County Extension Office at 320-255-6169. This is Emily Wilmes with University of Minnesota Extension. Since the announcement of backyard poultry flocks in Oregon and Washington State discovered with a form of high pathogen avian influenza, some nations have announced bans of some or all U.S. poultry products. U.S. Chief Veterinarian John Clifford reports. Four countries to date have shut off the U.S. poultry to fresh and frozen as well as day-old chicks and hatching eggs. So it really stops all movement of live poultry as well as all other fresh and frozen products of poultry to countries that have shut us off. Including China and South Korea. Other nations like Japan and the European Union have issued regionalized bans applying only to either states or specific counties where high path AI was found in backyard poultry. Clifford says the U.S. is working with nations applying full poultry bans to take a regionalized approach based on sound science approved by the World Organization of Animal Health. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C.